Hey guys, and welcome back to another video for my returning subscribers. If you're new to this channel, I show you how easy it is to modify your Land Cruiser or four wheel drive. So far I've turbocharged this thing, I've intercooled it, I've gotten it tuned, I've done painting jobs, we've recarpeted the thing, installed drawers, speaker boxes, you name it. We're getting through the list. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install a lift kit. Do you just wanna read? So if you want to be a part of my journey through modifying this thing, please be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest stuff that I put out. Um, and as always, I appreciate your comments, feedback and suggestions for future videos, and I will take them on board. Now, why should you or anyone install a lift kit? Well, when it comes to full driving, sometimes you just need that extra bit of clearance. And that two inches of lift that I'm installing today is gonna to help get my 105 off the ground a little bit more. Um, and anyway, the main reason I'm installing this today is because my suspension has had it. 620,000 Ks will do that to any suspension, shocks and springs. So yeah, we're gonna install some, uh, a two inch spring kit today and some IMS shocks. So let me tell you about these monotube shocks. For time's sake, I've decided I will compare twin tube and monotube shocks in a separate video and we'll possibly go into some more detail about the pricing and the pros and cons of both. So I guess we will see how it feels when I put it in anyway. So here's your little reel of before videos. Uh, I'll do some more accurate comparisons after the lift. But as you can see, the springs are not far off sitting down on the bump stop, so they're definitely worn, sagged, and it'll be yeah, interesting to you. see how much lift I actually get out of this two inch kit. Step one is to remove all your old shock absorbers. Once you've done this, it'll give you the ability to jack the car up so that you can pop out those old springs. That'd be easier if the tire was off. While the car was still on all fours and level, we decided we'd knock out the steering dampener, ready to put the new one in later. On one side, it's secured with a bracket that bolts up into the chassis, which is easy just to unscrew. On the other side, there's a ball joint. So unless you've got a ball joint tool, which I do recommend, you're just gonna have to give it a knock with a hammer. And let it go. It's not coming back out, it's going down. Wow. That's crazy, it just does. Once you've got that all sorted, the next step is to jack up the car and remove the old springs. We found we actually had to unbolt the sway bar and the rear mount of the radius arm to actually get enough lift for the old springs to drop out. We also found that these spring condensers were really helpful for keeping the spring compressed as we jacked the car up so that it was easy just to pop out. The first front spring we put in, we decided to compress. However, once we knew what we were doing and on the other side, we found this wasn't actually necessary and you can jack the car high enough so that you can just push or lever the spring into place. The rags were a bit of a pro tip I got from a mate of mine on Instagram, and it did in fact save the paint on the new springs. Make sure that you rotate the spring around enough so that it sits hard up against the bump stop on the bottom of the spring mount there before you put the weight back on the spring. Repeat the process for the back spring, and then you can go ahead and put your wheels back on.
because of the position of the pit in the shed, we decided it'd be best to kind of attach everything back to the underneath of the car and then reverse it in so that we can get to the other side. Now that we had a bit of a grip on what we were actually doing, it took us less than 15 minutes to jack this car up and swap out the springs on this side. And if you hadn't noticed, by this point there were three generations of Parker boys working on this lift kit. It did feel pretty cool. You'll need to reuse those top mounting brackets we took out earlier for the rear shocks and your bush washer bracket configuration should look something like this. To get the rear shockies up in their position, we first compress them in the pit and then we're able to hold it for just long enough to get it up onto its mounting bolts down the bottom and up the top. The front shockies were a little bit harder. As we kept that compression clamp on there to keep them closed, we had to compress them just a little bit more to get them in and then somehow had to work that clamp off after they were mounted. Alright everyone, this is Norman laying on the ground being a spastic and his father Toby. I'm sure you've spotted them in previous videos and I'm sure they'll also appear in many videos to come. And finally, we can put that new steering damper back in. The good news is that we don't have to go and reuse that nasty ball joint. It comes with all new mounting bolts, washers and nuts. Alright guys, so now that we've done our springs, our shock absorbers and our steering dampener, we're nearly there. The last thing that I want to show you how to do today is the caster correction bushes. So I can tell you now that you can get away without putting these in. And I actually took this in for a drive to town before I put them in. And it was obviously great with the new uh, lift kit in, but there was a lot of body roll. You'd turn into a corner and it'd really dip and it'd really correct. And even on straight roads, there'd just be a lot of rolling back and forth. These made a huge difference. Uh, it sits so much more solidly on the road and you don't feel like you're kind of just rocking back and forth all the time. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do these right now. All right, so now that we've got our radius on out, we can go ahead and pull these front two bushes out, which isn't as easy as it sounds, I'm sure. And then after we've done that, we'll be able to grab our new caster bushes from over there. This template we've printed off, which is a one-to-one -one scale, and hopefully we'll just be able to cut out these holes, line up our bushes, mark them, and press them in. These poly bushes are actually pressed in in two pieces from either side and have overhang on the edge of the radius arm. We decided the best way and easiest way to press these out was to cut away that edge on one side and press them down through. This was seriously unconventional and if any of you have an easier way to remove uh, poly bushes, please let me know in the comments down below. Now speaking of pressing, this is our ancient hydraulic hand pumped press. This is uh, really seriously helpful for pressing out bushes like this and other things of course. If you don't have one of these, uh, you might just have to get to it with a hammer or take these into a professional and get them to press it out. The next step is lining up the offset of the new bushes. You want to follow the template as accurately as possible 
and then measure between them to make sure the distance is 185 millimeters center to center. 185? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep, looks good as long as you're all good. Find a socket that fits the new bush almost perfectly and then press those beauties in. A bit of a cool tip for lining up those holes when you're getting the radius arm back in is to actually put a ratchet strap between the front and rear axle and then pull them together a little bit and that might just line up or it will just line up your holes in the radius arms. Another small tip for getting that middle bolt back in the corrected radius arm is to pull the middle bolt out of the other side which will allow the vehicle to roll a little bit as you push that new middle bolt back in. Repeat the process for your other radius arm and our work here is done. So there you go, this lift kit actually lifted my cruiser up a whopping 4 inches compared to what it was before, or 10 centimetres for us Australians, that's what we should be measuring in centimetres. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the springs had obviously sagged a fair bit uh, because, you know, they had done a fair few Ks, like, uh, I'm pretty sure my odometer's on 620,000 at the moment, so yeah, definitely a massive improvement, it rides so much smoother, uh, yeah, it just handles those corrugations so well. We've got um, stock ramps out in this farm and driving over them is basically like just driving on the road, like over a slab of concrete. It just handles corrugations incredibly and I'm so keen to really test this out in the future. So there you go guys, I hope you did find this video helpful today. I tried to make it as simple and straightforward yet as detailed as I possibly could, like I do in all of my videos. Uh, so yeah, if there's anything that I did miss today, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But that's about it from me today. If you liked this video, please remember to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video.